What's that? Damn you, son of a bitch! It's my burning. Yes. Plane crashes and the angry ghost of a dead airman await the most haunted crew. Oh my god! Welcome to Most Haunted. This week we brought you to RAF East Kirkby, the site of numerous World War II plane crashes. Phantom pilots, ghostly footsteps and a control tower that seems to come alive with paranormal activity. We've certainly got our work cut out for us. The construction of the airfield began in 1942. 57 and 630 squadrons were based here and they were equipped with the mighty Lancaster bombers. By 1943, the number of servicemen and women who were stationed at East Kirkby quickly topped 2,000. East Kirkby's aircraft suffered losses in Berlin and Nuremberg and Vessling raids. Towards the end of the war in April 1945, a Lancaster bomber caught fire whilst it was being loaded with bombs, resulting in a huge explosion, which set off further bombs. Four people were killed, six Lancasters were destroyed and a further 14 were damaged. The RAF finally disposed of the site in 1970, and now it's a museum. This is one of the most haunted airfields in Lincolnshire, possibly in the country. A lot of paranormal activities taking place here. There have been so many plane crashes on this airfield. That's obviously one of the reasons we put this hangar up here that we're sitting in now in 1987 and uh, you know there's been lots of happenings here just to start to tell you about you know all the ghosts who will be here a long long while there's been an awful lot of young lives cut short after taking off or landing from this airfield there is so much wreckage here from a multitude of crashes, and one in particular is the wreckage of a Spitfire. The body of the pilot was found underneath the plane over 50 years after the plane crashed. His wallet, still intact, gave up the sad story of a man who cancelled his leave only to be killed. Is it his ghost that's seen walking away from the wreckage, or is it just dark shadows moving around in an old warehouse? Now, you can't get closer to a death scene, if you like, than actually bringing the wreckage here and housing it, because it was that wreckage that took those lives away. And I think that is why some of those unfortunate, tormented souls still linger. And many people working in that hangar late at night have sensed ghostly goings on. There's a very interesting crash of a B-17 American bomber. He was actually from another airfield and he was in trouble and he desperately wanted to land here at East Kirkby. And he radioed in, was not given permission to land and was told to go round again. He went round again and still wasn't allowed to land. And on his third attempt, he crash landed on the perimeter of the airfield and all 10 of those poor, unfortunate, young American airmen perished. That was in 1944, and it crashed uh, in December 1944, and I was only 13 years of age then, but I remember it very well because uh, I was the second person to go to the crash site. In fact, I see the flying fortress coming down. There wasn't anything anyone could do. We see them, they brought them out on stretchers, covered up with blankets, uh, you know, and they were burnt to us in ash nearly. They were just black, yeah. You know, I remember it as if it was yesterday, that. An American airman's been seen wandering along this airfield towards the control tower. Now, I believe that that is possibly the captain, the pilot of that plane actually making his way across this airfield to 
go into that control tower to, if you like, have it out with the controllers to see why they wouldn't let him land. And I think that's why his tormented soul still lingers around this airfield to this day. In the early 40s, when war raged across Europe, this part of the control tower would have been in operation 24 hours a day by service personnel who were trying to safely land stricken aircraft. A strange feeling of being watched has been experienced in this room by staff, and also a dull murmuring of voices has been heard when there's no one here. The control tower, of course, that was the hub. That was where so much, if you like, energy was, was used, emotion, if you like, all those planes taking off and landing, being controlled by um, all those people in the control tower. And there's all sorts of strange things going on. Um, lights have been seen. Obviously, for a long period of time, there, were, there was no electricity in that building. And people caravanning used to report seeing green lights shining all through the night. And then they'd go along in the morning to have a look. And of course, no electricity, no light switches, but there was a light on. I've seen these lights three times and what sticks out the most is you don't, f uh, when you see them, you do feel quite calm. You certainly don't feel threatened by the light. The other thing I notice with these green lights when you do see them, you never see them come and you never see them go. People, since this place has been open to the public and is now set up as an old fashioned control tower, walking around, hear the telephones going. They've got old-fashioned telephones in there, but none of them are connected. When you go in there at night on your own, uh, it's very, very quiet, and quiet is quiet. But when you get something quieter than quiet, that goes straight through you. And any man, I don't care, uh, you know, we've been at no end of people, lots of people are going, even policemen will say, oh, I'll do it. But they always run back at the last minute, if you like. So I do defy anyone to do that. Now, Phil, there are plenty of supposed haunted airfields in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. What makes um, Kirkby so special? Well, this has actually got the reputation of being the most haunted airfield in, in Great Britain, based on the documented sightings uh, they've had everything from American airmen to disembodied voices in the control tower, telephones that ring by themselves, and the feeling in the control tower of oppression is quite noticeable. Oh, gosh, I don't fancy that later on at all. No, it's going to be interesting <laughs> later on. What about the baseline test? Because you spent a long time um, doing those. Did you come up with anything? I mean, it must be very difficult because it's got such a huge amount of space. It is difficult in the hangar. Uh, we've used the EMF meter around some of the parts to see if there's any residual energies. Uh, nothing was detected. In the control tower, it's a different story altogether. We can do all the baseline tests in the control tower. Um, the EMF meter, again, didn't pick anything up, but hopefully later on, things might kick off. I think with what's happened here, with all the different things I've seen on the airfield, I, I certainly do believe in them, or there is something paranormal that is happening. So I certainly believe more that there is than what there isn't. As the temperature dropped to freezing and the night descended, the airfield didn't look so friendly anymore. With the arrival of our medium, Derek Akora, we made our way into the hangar. Well, it's warmer in here, isn't it? Yes, yes. This is an amazing place. It's absolutely fabulous, isn't it? Do you need some time to sort of see if you can pick anything up and have a walk around? we just have a little yeah. walk around? Yeah. Ivy? Yeah, thank you. There's one thing I am picking up on, um, on the psychic level, is that I do not, at this point in this hangar, pick up any um, negativity, ill-feeling, even towards us and the team. I feel there's a, a, a great interest which I'm glad to pick up. Mm -hmm. A great interest like as if there's an observance. Now this observance and it's only on 
you know, my left side, so to speak, is if I've got one, two, oh, good, three, if not four observers. They seem to separate themselves, but they seem to be the same type of people. One of them is quite funny, actually, because although I'm not getting a voice, the name was part given and it was taken back. Can we just continue to walk in, Evie? Yeah. Over the side yeah, here, Evie. Great sorrow is an attachment to these conditions and the heat all, you know, coming back and surrounding us here in the resid residual energy. And the, I feel the last moments, the last moments of the uh, sheer terror of knowing um, I, this person is not coming back. Henderson, 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 is that the name? Henderson, I'm not sure whether he was in control, but I feel all the, the remnants of energy of that name here. Henderson. Henderson. Um, and there's a sergeant, a sergeant also, but that's not Henderson. And I feel as if I've got two visitations, two men who come here, they're not grounded. They come in visitation. Right. And I feel they're drawn back in some way with the residual energy of history or the links with this. And it's like the last moment as if they were shouting to each other, knowing they were doomed. doomed. They were doomed. The last moments. So you've got Henderson. Who's this other chap then? Oh, the only way I can put this, it's like the comradeship of their togetherness like best brings best, yes. And they counted, relied on each other. Mm -hmm. So much so, like brothers. And um, who? Say it again. It sounded like bank. Bank. Or banks. 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 It's what, Sergeant Banks? Is that Sergeant Banks? Sergeant Banks, I feel that is. Right. Okay. So Sergeant again. Banks and Henderson. Yeah. There's another one. Who's the other one? Oh. Okay. Can we just go a little bit further? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel as if this one is active here. He is active. Oh. He makes himself be seen. He has made himself be seen. Person who perished here in this actual area and his anger was his non-understanding his non-understanding over something um, I'm also getting um, the thought pattern coming to me as if from here I want to go over to the area across the yard that area over to the tower mm -hmm. absolutely and it's like anger is spiritually and psychically is going over. Who, who, who is this person who's saying to go over there? I'm getting, I don't know why I get this, but I'm getting the English and I'm getting American. Mm -hmm. Like American and, ooh. And this is if I want to push up um, into the tower and um, express, express my anger up there. Right, well, do you want to go to the tower? Can we go a little bit further up? Yeah, Be sure. Who? Say it again. I can hear you. Who are you? Who? Don't you forget me. I said, I won't. Who are you? Are you the person? I've got to give it because it's coming through strong now. It's not just the mental imagery and it's not internal. And he keeps on saying, and he's saying it very clearly, my name is John Pullum. Pullum, Pullum, Pullum. Everyone forgets me. Why are they forgetting me? That's what he wants to say. Why are they forgetting me? Right. Deering comes here as well. My good friend Deering. Deering. He keeps on saying. Well, who's Deering? He was strong. He was strong. He had, he had strength. He had bravery. He helped us, Deering. Deering. 
Is he the, is he the angry spirit then, this, this John? No, he's not. The, the, these are the individuals that are in this hangar decided to come here now to possibly help us. So it's not the man who died here? No, it's not. Right. We may find that later, right. maybe he'll step forward. He's got to step forward. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel the anger is keeping him grounded to this. In fact, I would say that these individuals that are now uh, deciding to communicate are not grounded, that they're visiting oh. from the world of spirit. But, uh, but this one here that is attached here um, is um, angry because of the possibilities, what should have been, that was not done. And he's angry. It's like as if he goes to the tower, you know, and, and, and you know, he just wants, oh, gosh, he wants an explanation. Mm. He wants an explanation, and he's not going to leave here until he gets the answers, but he can't because he's frustrated. So does that mean that his spirit will always be here until somebody gives him an explanation? Until so someone comes from the world of spirit and gives him that explanation, oh. but the one who won't not give him the explanation is because he or this person was wrong. Was wrong. <gasps> wrong in the tower. Right. Was wrong in the tower. Right. He is just so angry. He believes, still to this moment in time, that what happened to him should never have happened. Right. Derek was picking up on a lot of energy from a particular wreckage, and so far he was correct, but we needed the pilot's identity. Would he be able to give us the pilot's name, and most importantly, tell us if it's his ghost that's haunting the airfield? I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Derek was picking up strong connections with a young pilot that had crashed trying to land at the airfield. He was about to give us some amazing evidence that only myself, Phil and the owners had any knowledge of. Okay. A memory thought patterns coming through on uh, the residual energy is that how unlucky how unfortunate had circumstances been different the person the man who lost his physical being and his life shouldn't have been there mm. shouldn't have been here and i want to talk about um i haven't got my wallet with me um oh, it's it's <laughs> He was supposed to do, be doing something else, and he couldn't get to go there, or he couldn't be where he wanted to be. And he, he volunteered. He said, I might as well go up, because I can't put something in this wallet that um, he's concerned about. Oh. Tell, tell me what, what, first of all, before I do this, are you picking anything up that could be in this wallet? I feel there's a, a piece of paper, a document, something here that um, has um, he to collect. Had he gone in, when, had he gone to collect, he wouldn't have gone down. Any idea what it was he was going to collect? He didn't have something, he didn't have something. Please give it to me, please. Your energy is draining back, please come back. Help him, Sam. He loved vehicles, this man. He loved cars. Oh, his energy's coming close in. Monitor him, Sam. Monitor him. I know he's a good soul. He's not a bad soul. What's that document? I keep on getting this desire of, um, with him of a love of car mm. and cars. They're the actual documents that were in mm. the wallet. That's a, a document that you might have been talking about. There's the motor thing, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is what... His energy. He's so pleased, even in my hands. It's as if, like, he's... Oh. That means more to him than actually losing his physical life. Can I just go back on a couple of things? You know how you, you came up with, with the quote, how unlucky or unfortunate? Yes. 
or in, he shouldn't have been here. Mm. He was actually due to collect that vehicle from the mo from, from the garage on the day that he died. Yeah. Bless him. But he couldn't collect it. He is angry at certain times when he goes to the tower. Oh. He is angry. He is. Oh. And he may display a little bit of anger over there, I feel. Mm. In the memories of what should have been, what could have been. Mm. Um, can we go over to the tower? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to go there. Yeah, okay. okay because yeah. I feel as if we're being drawn there, yeah. you know? The ghost of an airman has been seen regularly walking towards the control tower. Most people believe this apparition to be the ghost of one of the American crew members of a B-17 that crash-landed, killing all on board. According to Derek, this is not so. The ghost is that of a pilot who was not allowed to land at the airfield. This, in fact, did happen on July the 1st, 1943. A Canadian pilot flying a Spitfire requested permission to land as he was low on fuel. For some unknown reason, his request was not granted, and he crashed miles from the airfield. In 1989, his plane was finally found, under the ground, along with his body and his wallet. We still needed to know the pilot's name, and Derek thought the control tower would reveal the answer. They're so angry. Uh, as he was stamping down with his fists... God damn you, son of a bitch. God damn you, son of a bitch. You could have let me come down. Why did you keep me up there? I'm Norman. I'm Norman. Norman. Don't, don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm in control. I personally feel as if this poor soul, normal, is in his own torment. Right. Um, he, he's intelligent enough to realise that, the, you know, which is a change mm -hmm. to... And he's been told that there is another place mm -hmm. by his comrades that also lost their lives. Mm -hmm. His next point, there's only one more thing to go for him in mind, mm -hmm. and that is to get this, like, apology. An apology. But he's not going to get that, is he? He holds on to this torment that he still feels is attached here. Mm -hmm. But I've also got to point out, he's certainly not a spirit person that deserves to still be in this atmosphere. Mm. He should have gone on. He was a good soul. He was an honourable man. And he deserves to be in his rightful place. Right. He shouldn't be grounded here. So if Derek was correct, Norman Watt, the young Canadian pilot, was still here, haunting the airfield to wait for an answer as to why he couldn't land. Now that Derek had named the mystery pilot, he felt drawn back to the hangar, as he thought we might experience some activity. Just in case we did catch something paranormal on camera, Richard Felix was keeping an eye on us in the monitor room, and Jonathan, the owner's grandson, joined us in our investigation. A little bit earlier, in fact, I was drawn to the back of this um, plane, this mm. aeroplane, and um, I, I'm being drawn again. Right. It, it was not a spirit person showing themselves, but I heard a voice saying, go to the front of the plane. Right. And he pointed up to the engines, mm -hmm. and he said, we're, we're pleased, we've been watching, we've been looking in. However, he said, we're pleased with the work that's been done. They're all functional. And I said, what are all functional? And he said, the engines. But one is not totally functional and it's not working while we're waiting, all of us, in anticipation for it to be completed so the four engines will be workable again. But it's just come back now. And it, 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 he's pleased, this man, as the voice. And I said, who are you? And he said, Hutchins. It sounds like Robert Hutchins. Robert Hutchins. And he's... There's another one. There's another one. There's two of them. They've come together. Robert Hutchins and my good friend Robert Hay. Robert Hay. Right. 
Robert Hutchins and Robert A. They come and visit here. They're, they're interested and drawn back to this particular plane. Right. And because they're interested in watching the completion of these engines being sorted out. Can we check that with Richard? It hey, sounded Richard. like Robert Hutchins and Robert Hay. Yeah, can you check it? Um, the names Robert Hay and Robert Hutchins in connection with the Lancaster bomber? Yeah, they're here. Okay. But they're not. They're not constantly here. It's just fleeting visits. Mm -hmm. They are totally aware. If the engines were to be spun now. One would most definitely not be functional. We should check on that about the engine. Sorry, Phil, just see if that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard, is it true that the one of the engines on the Lancaster is, is not functional or not functioning correctly? You're quite right. One of those engines has recently been changed. It does actually need a slight um, adjustment or tweaking. Did you hear that again? Shh. It's all in the fog. Oh, oh my God, did you hear that? Yes. Did you hear that? Stay still, stay right. still, stay right. still, stay still. Stay still. Stay. Shh, stand still. Down there now. Down there now. Did you hear that? It's got a bump. Oh, shh. both basically where you are. Yeah. Jonathan said, have you picked anything up from here? From the camera. And literally we moved the light, the torch around, and exactly where Jonathan was standing, there was, a, there was literally a guy, it, it was a top hat, just completely black, like, like a shadow black. Yeah. Guy with a, with a, a hat, a, like a captain's hat, and he was just pointing like this. And I, I just stopped, I stopped dead and Jonathan said, yeah, I know, I've seen it too. And I said, what? And he said, well, first thing I saw was an orb. He said, and then I just saw the figure. And I said, yeah, well, that's what I've seen, a figure of a... Was he pointing to the bomber, Carl? He was, po he was pointing in this direction. In that direction. Yeah. Towards the direction of the bomber. Well, what do you think we should do? Do you think we should just stand near the bomber and be really yeah. quiet and see if we can pick yeah. anything feel, noises up? I feel that is an area in which, um, you know, we're likely to uh, get something yeah. there. OK. Yeah. Should we stand near the bomber, then? Yeah, yeah. And if this this man was pointing in that direction, he's pointing in the direction yeah. of the bomber. Yeah. Oh, there is a drawer in the energy, so they've got to this, the drawing was to it, definitely. Should we stop here? Okay. Should everybody just stands really quietly. Please, just for the, for the ears alone, for the hearing, please put your effort into making some kind of gesture, noise.
three cameras. Okay. Why don't each one of you take a cameraman and go into a separate corner? Yeah. If anything happens, you can call the others to you. How's that? Okay. Great. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Derek, okay. which corner would you like to go in? That corner. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yvette, which one would you like to go into? That one. This one here. Phil? Yeah. Uh, I'll go with Derek. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah it's just true. I'll go down there. I'll just go something. Yeah. From it. Come I'll on, go down there. We decided to split into small groups to hopefully find out who or what was making the strange noises, and some of us wished we hadn't. We had split into three groups so we could investigate the huge hangar more effectively. Derek, Jonathan and John Dibley, one of our cameramen, were in one group. Craig, Carl and myself had decided to go to the area where Carl had seen the shadow of an officer. And Phil and Rick sat quietly near the bomber. Right. Be quiet. Yeah, just be quiet for a second. Yeah. From your point of view, I mean, could you not like look at it sort of like the noise is like creaks or anything? Because it said. Yeah, there could be there could be just normal building noises. Um, because that hangar is at quite a high smooth and it will catch the wind. I mean, the slightest noise echoes all the way down the hangar. It's like I say, you hear a noise that's sounds right next to you and you could have actually been the other end of the hangar. You've got to admit though, it's a very spooky atmosphere. The profile is looking that way as well. See the peak of his cap? Actually no, he could have, because you could see his finger, but his arm wasn't wrong. So he could have been pointing over there. But Derek is. Come on. We're all thrilled with your efforts. And we're absolutely thrilled that you're here. Please. Whilst Derek was trying to communicate with the supposed spirits, something had started to happen to Jonathan. The hangar was freezing, but Jonathan was burning up. You know who I am, don't you? OK. If at any time you feel uncomfortable, please tell, you, tell us that, won't you? I feel warm. You feel warm? warm. Okay. Yeah, you are. He is as well. God, you're cold. Yeah, you are hot. I can show you your eyes. Okay. Everything's safe and everything's okay. right in front of the screen. Is there anybody there? Is there anybody here with us in the, in the hangar? I thought that was interesting. Well, um... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yes, 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 yes. Why have I heard that? Is there anybody there? Norman, you here? Anybody here with us now? What I find quite interesting is the fact that Carl and Jonathan both saw the same thing at the same time. So would you put that down to unexplainable? The only other thing I can think of being is, is a, a shadow cast by somebody else. Mm. But um, there was nobody there. There was only because we just walked into the other corner of the hangar. So but it's good that they both independently witnessed it at the same time. Mm. Do you want to sit in the chair? Why am I sitting in the chair? That's it, keep going. I think it was. Something fell from above. Something fell Nothing from above. Nothing can fall from above. Yeah, but it did. <gasps> Someone's throwing something. Somebody's throwing something. Somebody's 
something is throwing something. No, that rolled, something rolled on the floor. No, 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 it didn't. It hit the glass. It hit the glass. There's glass there, and it hit the glass. I'm telling you. That's the floor. Yeah, but something, something hit the floor. No, it didn't. It hit the glass cabinet. It fell from the bottom and hit the glass cabinet. I'm telling you. Did you hit this glass? Yes. Yeah. It was like a pebble. Two stones had fallen onto us. Was it coincidence, or had someone thrown them? We were confused as to why this had happened, but we were about to be more mystified when we heard about Jonathan. He's here, and he's very, very, very hot. If you place your hand on his forehead, calm, you know that he's... You right, Jonathan? Mm. Yeah. Do you know where you are? <coughs> you are? No, no. You are boring. He's very hot, isn't he? Absolutely. Feel his forehead, ever. He's... Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 You see, this could also be um, thought transference um, through uh, a spirit person who's undergone bless um, situations of burning um, at last moment and explosion. He's burning up. Traumatic shock after so yes. picking up the feelings. Of, yes. Yeah. His sensitivity is just like drawing him in. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Let's 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 get John out to the front yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just take your time, nice and slow. We all escorted Jonathan outside into the fresh air, where shortly after he was back to his normal self. Meanwhile, the rest of us carried on our investigation, but it wasn't long before another member of our crew began to feel very uncomfortable. I hate to say this, but my arm, my left arm, is burning. Is it? Is it? It's been doing it for about the last two minutes, and it's becoming uncomfortable. OK, now, there's another transference again. And, th again, this could be um, the reflection of um, certain things that had happened to these poor men um, in a scenario of being stuck, being burnt, and blessed and not being able to do a thing about it and having to go through that experience. It's really, it's, it's, it's really, it's like on fire. It's really, really it's, uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. You made your point on this. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No, absolutely. No. Smell it, Evie. Oh my God, it stinks! Yes. Smell it. Yes. Smell it. It's there. Smell it, guys. Okay, come on. Okay. Oh absolutely. Yeah, yes. Smell it. Look. Smell it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, take it off now. Come on, it's most uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Smell it. Is there any blue smell? Yes. Craig, smell it's it. It's the bin and the, the, the hairs and also the beginning of the flesh. Oh, that is burnt. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. How are you feeling, Carl? It's good. Poolless. OK. Come on. Take this off now. Take this energy off. There is your phenomena. You're a nat well, a natural, a, 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 an emplacement phenomena. It's so they've burnt. finished, yeah. Tom, smell it. Just, just smell his arms. Yeah. Yeah. They've taken the, is the hairs on your arms. Yes. It's gone all short. Are you all right? You see, these are the things that they can do to really, really prove to us all, OK, in a natural form, a phenomena, a phenomena that can't be... It's not tangible. It can't be gauged. But the spirit people, if they've undergone an experience, can transfer into that thought to, for, to manifest to our physical bodies. This is the most bizarre investigation so far I've come across. It's bizarre. Is there such a thing as thought transference, where a spirit can induce feelings and pain of their suffering onto a living person? If so, had it happened here tonight? Were Carl and Jonathan picking up those terrible feelings that the pilots experienced in their last moments before death? During the night, different members of the crew had spent time in the control tower. We all thought that nothing was going to happen until Carl, John and Stuart 
went and investigated the building at 4 a.m. Oh, what the fuck was that? What was that then? What? Was that your No, I swear to God. That was a flash just through there. I've seen yeah. that flash then. What was it? Right. Is that someone called up search? Is anyone else in here? You've got to go investigate, you guys. The boys had experienced what has been seen and reported many times, the strange light and the door closing. Had the ghost of Norman Watt visited them early in the morning? Is anyone down there? What was that light? I don't know. Is that... Oh. During the rest of the investigation in the hangar, the noises stopped and everyone felt fine. It was almost as if the mischievous presence we all felt earlier had just simply disappeared. There were so many items and artefacts here for Derek to actually pick up on, bits of metal that had actually taken lives away. I knew it was going to be good, and um, we certainly weren't disappointed. It didn't take me long to understand that there was an individual, a man, a man who, to this present day, has felt he's not got the answers really for basically why he had to physically perish in such a horrid way. I think when Derek picked up on uh, Norman Watt, the poor unfortunate Spitfire pilot, there's absolutely no chance whatsoever that Derek would have known anything about that before he came here. I'm convinced of that. His atmosphere was really, really surrounding me. And he put into my mental thoughts a wallet. The fact that he actually said that he'd lost something, and of course it was the lad's wallet, and that wallet is actually here in a polythene bag in a drawer. Even I didn't know about that. I'm totally convinced that, that Derek actually got through to that lad. It was absolutely fascinating. It's convinced me beyond all doubt, A, of Derek's ability, and B, that there are ghosts. This place is most definitely very active. Of all of the investigations I've seen, this particular one is the most fascinating. We've got so much different phenomena. We've got apparition sightings, We've got noises that are being heard, orbs even, and also this interesting smell phenomena and somebody's temperature going up. We've got loads of different sort of phenomena that are also different for the people involved because they're accessing all the different senses. So visual, smell, um, hearing, all of that. And I think it's fascinating to look through and try and sort out exactly what's going on. Put something in this wallet that um, he's concerned about. Derek comes up with some fantastic information about a departed pilot, and it's very compelling for the crew and for us watching when he mentions about a wallet. This is fantastic information because it is very, very personal um, and not something that could be guessed. You know, it's not a high probability statement, as it were. So it's good sort of evidence that we're looking for. Do you smell burning? Yes, absolutely. No, absolutely not. smell it. Even. Oh my God, it stinks! Yes, yes. smell it. Yes, smell it. it's there. At some point, uh, Carl feels that his arm is burning and actually says, "Oh, my arm's burning." And then the crew start to react um, and they can they touch it and they also smell yes. burning. Yeah. Now, okay, all of the crew. Now smell it independently so yeah. there may have been a factor of group conformity and suggestion and people like bouncing the ideas off oh. each other and that would increase the intensity of the smell but everybody smelt the burning immediately um, and certainly there's no indication of any sort of fraudulent practice here of Carl going off and putting lighter fluid or anything on his arm this I'm going to maybe eat my own hat and say, this is some fantastic, genuine phenomena. 
Well, what a fantastic night. I don't think myself or the rest of the crew will ever forget RAF East Kirkby. Until the next time, sleep tight.